Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Student, and welcome to our practice strategy session. This is actually our fourth one, um, as things are changing so much during this coronavirus, or uh, commonly known as COVID-19 pandemic. Now, before I get into the, the chiropractic practice strategy, first thing I'd like to say is, is that uh, just my heartfelt sympathy to all of those who are fallen ill, who are suffering. I am located in Long Island in New York, pretty much in the epicenter of what's going on. And it's really horrible. And in most cases, here it's actually worse than it's being reported. Um, it, it's pretty terrible listening to the stories having colleagues and friends and family that are in the healthcare system and, and really seeing what's going on and how just, um, it's just terrible. So my heartfelt sympathy to anyone who's going through any of these illnesses and to any losses, and I mean that sincerely. And I've said this before, you know, we, we as, as healthcare providers and doctors are coming from a position of strength for the most part. We don't have to worry about putting food in our table we don't have to worry about shelter over our head or, or where our next paycheck is coming from. You know, we've got receivables to live on and, and, and perhaps not affluence, some of us maybe, but we're okay. But that means we have to serve out of abundance. We have to be able to help those who are less fortunate than us. We have to be able to reach out and help our staff and help our friends and even those who we, 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 we were at odds with. We need to help them as well. We need to turn to our faith-based activities and really get involved and help people and, and pantries and shelters. It's time for those who can serve out of abundance to do so. And even if you can't, still try to help. So I just want to let everyone know that from me and my family to you and your family, uh, please stay well. Um, please stay isolated for now. And the suggestions I'm giving you are based upon you know, a lot of people, a lot of collaborate information and a lot of things that I've learned and it's moving fast. This is the fourth one we've done. A week ago was the first one. So much has changed. Um, business has changed. Opening has changed. Closing has changed. Coding has changed. Uh, we, we recorded something yesterday and it just changed today. So I'd like to read a... Um, uh, a quote that to me, and I've read it before, if you've heard me speak uh, any, on any of these uh, series, and it says, as we stand together at this crossroads of history in these unprecedented times, together we will emerge stronger than before, because what you do now will determine how strong you will be. You are in control and have the power to dictate your own success. And I truly believe that. I firmly believe that. Because remember, and I'm going to say this multiple times, we're preparing for opening day. We've got to tread water right now. Even though you shut your doors, there are still billing opportunities and things you can do in your practice at the moment. There are things you can prepare for and things you should be doing. And we need to prepare. So the goal today, and well, to get back over there, our goal is to create a stronger practice today that endures the balance of your career regardless of the obstacles. Your practice has to endure the balance of your career regardless of any obstacle that's in front of you. And I mean that sincerely. Now, what we're gonna talk about today is what to do with your current patients in office, what to do with them, what to do um, with telemedicine. We're gonna give you telemedicine solutions and that's really, really important. We're going to give you automated web-based solutions, paper solutions. We're going to see what are you going to do with your time and how do you manage and pay your staff specifically with the FSLA labor laws. We're going to teach you how to prepare for opening day and communicate with your current patients. As far as a webinar goes, we, we're, we're doing right now, and our first one is tomorrow, uh, or maybe today or yesterday by the time you hear of this, lawyer webinars. We're doing webinars for attorneys in the community to keep them engaged in your office if they are the core of your referral sources, or if you want them as referral sources. We're giving them, a, we're giving you a very, very, very inexpensive way of doing this, um, and everyone's from their home. About financing, we're going to teach you about financing and loans and what the government is doing and what industry and banking is doing. 
We're going to talk about ensuring that your credit is saved. So there's a lot of things that we have to discuss. But I do want to let you know that you're not alone. You're not alone in this. This is a, a, a symposium. We had a primary spine care symposium that we had um, last uh, October in New York. Um, I mean, this is just a smattering of the room, probably about a quarter of the room, not even. Um, you know, there's a lot of really smart people out there and a lot of really good people out there who, in fact, are here to support you. And I'm one of those people and there are others. So if you have any questions, please, 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 please call me. It's my pleasure. Now, in your office, to do in-office screenings, and by the way, there's a lot of documents up here and you could do screenshots of them. If you're a consulting client of mine, I make these available. Look, membership does have its privileges. Um, we run an organization called the Academy of Chiropractic. Um, on the home screen, just to go back, is my phone number if you need me, right here, 631-786-4253. Uh, Teach Kairos, it says, or academyofchiropractic.com, or teachkairos.com is the way to find us, or to find me, to be, to be specific, it's the way to find me. Got to turn my phone off. I knew I forgot to do something. But when patients come in for in-office screenings, and I urge you to do this right now until this pandemic is passed, every patient should fill this out every single time. You want to ensure that you're protected and your staff is protected to take their blood pressure, do their pulse. Blood pressure really doesn't mean that much. Pulse is okay. Temperature is important. But remember... You don't spike a fever until about five days into being infected. But get some information. You really want to try to screen as best as you can to protect you and your staff if they're there. And remember, if your state is one of those where it's not highly prevalent, more likely than not, there's not enough testing kits there. So shortly, they're going to be all over the country and numbers are going to spike. Or if we're at the other end, um, then you really don't have anything to worry about. But here's suggestions for in-office procedure. And we share this with all our patients. Due to the coronavirus issue our nation is facing, we are taking extraordinary measures to ensure your safety with our offices so that your care may continue. Here are the precautions we've enacted in our office. And this is if, one, you're allowed to open, and two, if you want to open. Because remember, you're going to be exposed to a lot of people and bring them home to your family, potentially. So... Think long and hard, and I can't guide you on that. That's a personal decision. Our staff is being limited only to essential people to treat patients. The rest are asked to stay home. Our entrance door is disinfected between every patient, and actually you can have your staff open the door and not have them touch the door. Our floors are being disinfected twice daily. I and other providers who have contact with patients are disinfecting our hands between every patient. The treatment tables are being cleaned in front of you prior to your treatment, and you have the option. It's no longer an option. The waiting room is their car, and we'll come and get you in the office, and that's important. And if, in fact, you're, you're in a big office building and there's no car, have them wait in the hallway. Or just not congregate at least six feet apart. These are extraordinary times that require vigilance and extraordinary measures. We urge you to continue your order treatment plan, however, if it is challenging to keep your appointed number of visits, do the best you can and we will accommodate you in every way possible. We look forward to life normalizing and we will do everything within our power to ensure your health, happiness, and safety. But short of people coming in, what you need to do <clears throat> is you need to prepare, uh, be prepared and you need to manage your patients. So you need to get a list of your active patients and you need to define who your current telemedicine now we're getting into telemedicine and i'm going to talk about that in just a moment so but you need to communicate with your patients patients need to understand that their care cannot abruptly stop it's not in their interest and if they have a personal injury case it can be help you like that help it could be held against them and understanding personal injury possibly better than anyone else in the united states in our industry um a defense lawyer will Go to that depth, that level, to hold it against the patient for not continuing care in one way, shape, or form. So you need to create a treatment protocol for home care. And that's really, really important. So here's what you tell your patients. If it's a personal injury patient, 
You call them up and you say, hi, Mrs. Jones, this is Dr. Student. I'm calling to have you continue your care at home during this crisis. I have created a treatment plan for you involving a home exercise program that can be done in your living room, which is easy, and you only need to write a few things for me. I will be speaking to you twice per week to document your care and be able to monitor your neck, back, low back, etc. condition while discussing and answering any questions concerning, and this is depending upon what you're going to order for them, exercise, nutrition, posture, body mechanics, heat, ice, etc. Now, in a PI case, you'll add, this is also critically important for your accident case, as non-participation might be construed, and get rid of might be, as you not having real injuries. This will be a billable event to formally document your care. Here's what you need to do and explain your patient, explain your, your, pan, your plan. But this is critically important. You communicate with your patients because you need to be with them preferably twice a week to, to see, to document. We'll get to that in a moment. Now, same thing for non-PI, but then you leave out the accident case and say this is being billed as a telemedicine event and here's what you need to do and just explain the treatment plan. Now, regarding telemedicine, you have two real solutions, a paper-based solution and, a, um, well, actually web exercises, which is an automated web-based solution. It's really, there's three solutions. I put two up there. Um, web exercises. You, you need to give them some kind of home exercise program. Or let me rephrase this. You should, depending upon what you feel is clinically indicated. And I have scoured the industry and I found the company Web Exercises is owned by a chiropractor in California. And I choose to support our own. And their prices actually are better than anyone in the country. And their portal, because it was created by a doctor, a chiropractor, is just killer. It's just lights out killer. But if you don't want to have a web, an automated web-based solution, have a paper-based solution. And I've created sample documentations for you to look at. Now, you can either do this manually on paper or, or, or actually uh, old-fashioned on a telephone and just talk to people, or get a telemedicine meeting room. This company, Secure Telehealth, who I spoke with yesterday, they have virtual, virtual rooms which are HIPAA compliant in which they can either record your conversation, but more importantly, they track the time because a lot of these are time-based codes. So they usually charge $50 per month provider, per provider, but just tell them that you're from the Academy of Chiropractic and they'll charge you 50, 50 bucks. They take 50% off. Now, please understand, I'm going to be rec recommending a lot of partners. For those of you who don't know me, it is unfortunately um, usual and customary in our industry for the referrer to get a refer fee. I call that a kickback. Um, I don't get, I do not take money from any partner we work with. I, I just don't. So therefore, I don't get a penny of this. I want you to know that. Um, and you can ask Jim if Dr. Student's getting any money from it, and the answer is gonna be no. But they kinda hit the easy button because they've been doing this for a very, very, very long time. And I've called a lot of different companies. They use Zoom technology, which is HIPAA compliant, and at 50 bucks a month, it's a no-brainer. And by the way, you might wanna continue this after this pandemic is over. Um, I would. Um, I never even considered it. But you know what? Especially if someone cannot keep their appointment, I'm on the phone with them. I'm communicating with them. I'm making sure they're doing order and home exercise plans. I'm documenting it and I'm billing for it. That's just the way it is because it's my time. Now, when you're speaking to them and you want to order exercises, this is exercise prescription made easy. And this is web exercises. So, you go on your computer or your cell phone or your tablet and you pick exactly what you want your patients to do. And then you fill out a prescription. Your name, the facility, the exact frequency, duration, reps, and examples. And I wouldn't pick the Theraball one because who's got a Theraball at home? Very few people. So you let them know what you want to do. And then the patient goes on their portal and you'll, you'll, you'll tell them what, you'll email them the access to get in. It's very, very simple. And this is your orders. Uh, number one, floor angle. Three sets, 10 reps, three times a week. The patient will simply put their pain level, how many, how many reps for the first set, how many reps for the second, how many reps for the third. And this is one way of getting a report. You get charts, you get graphs. 
These guys do it really, really well. And then you have to document subjective, ordered results, assessment, and plan. And I'm going to give you samples of that. Now, if you go to Web Exercises, hit webexercises.com, use the discount code Academy of Cairo. Uh, and by the way, they might have changed that. I'm not sure. But if you call them, if you it's webexercises.com, email Misty. It's $349 annually for if you mention the Academy of Chiropractic or Doctor Student, they drop the $249 annually. And I gotta tell you, this is the biggest no-brainer in the world because it's wonderful stuff. Also, when we get the green light for opening day, you can now use this in your office to track their exercises. You could do in office, you can print out sheets. It's wonderful. In addition, we have a paper solution. Manually deliver and document a home exercise program. So I have, you, you can get a home exercises or exercise sheets right off the internet. I mean, I got this from um, one of our doctors in New Jersey who just shared with me what he had. Um, it's easy and you could just do this and you have to get this to your client, your patients. Email, fax, snail mail, take pictures, send it on, the, on your cell phone. Then what you're going to do is you need to call the patient and review their progress. So when you're doing that, this is a document that I actually created. Subjective, just like any subjective um, intake you do on every soap note. O becomes order and home treatment. This is what you're ordering, okay? Uh, sets, reps, frequency, assessment. You must have a diagnosis for each encounter. Plan what they reported. How many sets? How many reps did they do? Pain scales, frequency per day. And in the bottom of the doctor's note, you put the CPT in. You put the time you started the encounter with the patient and the time you stopped. 2.06 to 2.26. And then under that, put 20 minutes. Start time, stop time, and then the actual time. And that's very important. So this is something you can create. Whoops, sorry about that. This is my clients. I provide this for them. I created it. I'm sharing it with you. You can create your own. If you want to take your cell phone out right this second and take a picture of this, uh, that would be a really cool thing to do. Or if you're really cool technology, do a screenshot. Next. Coding. Now, here's my disclaimer about coding. The Academy of Chiropractic and CMCS Management does not set codes or fees. And I'm going to pop out of here because we had a coding change just yesterday. And I'm putting that up and I'm switching back. Okay. We don't set fees, nor do we any affiliates, etc. It's up to you, the doctor, to make a decision. I like the H.J. Ross Company, amongst others. But a 99421 is an appropriate code to use. Um, and I believe Medicare, yep, me Medicare uh, suggested a 99421, or you could build a 99202 with a GT modifier means home. This is for a new patient, or a 99212 for an established patient. And the Office of Civil Rights under HHS Health and Human Services is really not going to look hard at the HIPAA rules right now. They said they're going to look away until this uh, emergency is over. So they're going to be a little lax on this if you want to call people and chat with them so you can communicate with your patients. So a modifier 95, per, mo per the AMA, modifier 95 means synchronous telemedicine service rendered via real-time interactive audio and video telecommunication system. Okay, so um, this is something that's interactive when you communicate and speak to your patients. It's very, very simple. There is considerable overlap between uh, using the GT modifier and modify 95. Also, place of service is O2. It means telehealth. So O2 is what you're going to be considered. And again, we do not set codes or fees. That's entirely up to you. Now, in 99421, 422, 423, um, this is an established, and I do have to come back again. Whoa, baby, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. I have another typo. I apologize. There we go. You could bill it statically. 
as a, let me just get back where I was. There we go. I just want to make sure we do it right. In the state of New York, they want you to use older codes, 99441, 442, or 443, based upon 5 to 10 minutes, 11 to 20, or 21 to 30. Medicare says 99421, 22 or 23, the same parameters. Or some states want you to only do a 999212. And again, these are, these are telemedicine codes. Or if you're doing the 212 or 202, then use modifier 95. And that's important. So this is really a state-by-state -state issue. Many states have different rules. The state of Washington has a certain set of rules. New York does. Every state has its own set of rules. So you might want to call your state organization. You might want to call the Department of Insurance if someone's there. But I've given you some guidelines. Uh, and other than New York and the state of Washington, when you use your 99212 codes, I always default back to the feds. You're always safe using the Medicare guidelines uh, from a legally defensible position. And as far as fees goes, you have to set those. Um, the medical, there's a book called Medical Fees in the United States by Physicians Medical Information Corporation. Uh, you can look at a 212 visit, uh, look for telemedicine, you could Google it. Um, unfortunately, I can't give you any guidance because we don't set any fees. As far as documentation requirements, you need to put the date. And who's the participants, you and the patient? Length of call, clock time, 206, 216, and the total time, the nature of your call and all decisions, and this way it's medical. And whether it's stretching, whether it's nutrition, whether it's exercise, whether it's extra bed rest, whether it's walking, all of those things need to be documented in your note. And one of the things I did miss back here, if you're working from an EMR system, you need to contact your EMR company for guidance on documentation. It's not a one size fits all. Everyone's got something a wee bit differently. Now. What do you do with your time? You know, for my clients, I, I, I tell them, read and listen to all the consultations. I, I've given them, uh, the, everyone has a playbook on what they need to do. How to build an admissible infrastructure. How to build an infrastructure where you get your referral sources to run after you. And, and that's critically important. You've got to get them to run after you. And you've got to get your office in line to do that. Um, I have a, a very strong relationship with the attorneys um, from many of the major insurance companies, and I know what the carriers are looking for. So we want people to do a compliance review with us, and if not with us, do with somebody, because the carriers are looking. You've got to get your documentation down, and that's important. And you've got to get educated. We've got a great site um, called teachdoctors.com. There's a lot of good online stuff. This is our seat university. Just click right here under all courses and you you can, you know, you could pick any course you want. There's a lot of great academics there. But go anywhere. Go to any acad any postdoctoral stuff. We offer programs like trauma qualified. We offer programs that are hospital qualified, evaluation and management qualified. We have a lot of programs that if I can just get here and scroll down, we have all of these different, these are our award recognition page. I mean, every one of these doctors are trauma qualified. I mean, it goes on and on and on, and this is public and, and this is what their referral sources get to see. So just a little bit, and I guess this is a little bit of a plug, which is not intended to, but I just want to let people know that you have an opportunity to take here, trauma qualified, there's 11 courses. Hospital qualified, 11 courses. Evaluation and management, um, expert witness, primary spine care, mini fellowship in neuroradiology. There's a lot of academic opportunities for you in the industry that you're really not aware of that you should avail yourself to. And I mean that sincerely. There's just a lot of things going on. Um, and by the way, if you do any of the courses, during this pandemic, which I, I really expire tomorrow, that I'm going to extend for another week or two, in any of our courses at teachdoctors.com, put in the code 25NOPANIC, and you'll get 25% off. And we never do that, but we're doing that now to help you prepare. Now, as far as paying your staff, 
a lot of people are furloughing their staff, putting them on unemployment because they just can't afford to carry them. And if you're an employee of your corporation, you could furlough yourself and collect unemployment. But you have to understand the Fair Labor Standards Act of who you're going to pay and, and what you're going to pay. Um, now, you have two kinds of employees, exempt and non-exempt. To make it the simplest, exempt are full-time employees uh, and non-exempt are part-time employees. Okay, It's very simple. So exempt means they're exempt from being paid overtime. That's a full-time employee. Non-exempt is part-time. I think I might have said that backwards. So um, exempt and again, let's just make it clear. Non-exempt hourly employees, you only have to pay them for the hours they work. If it's a non-exempt salaried employee, okay, don't need to be paid when they don't work. If, okay, and, and there's there's a, a formula of a non-exempt salary, I'm not going to get into that. But the hard rule is, is if you have a salaried employee, even if they do one thing in one day, meaning answer a single email, you have to pay them for the day. You have to pay them for the day. If they answer one question, you have to pay them for the day. Now, hopefully you have staff office policies. We provide the, that opportunity for our clients to have that, which has everything defined, so there is no question. But most doctors are furloughing their patients, their, their staff. Now, as far as refinancing, we know Citizens Bank is, is doing 2.75 deals right now. A lot of people are refinancing if they have equity and pulling out a couple of extra bucks. The Small Business Administration is giving 30-year loans at 3.75, really low interest. And they're discussing, because it's not clear yet, forgiveness for staff salary usage of the loan proceeds. It's available if they are negotiated up front. Uh, Kimberly Schneider, who's a wonderful person, has volunteered her time. She's the part of the Emory Advisory Group. She's a broker, and she works with business loans and, and home refinancing loans. But during this crisis, she's donating her time to our doctors. If you call her at this number, she's down in Florida, she will help you work through the Small Business Administration process. And she won't charge. She won't charge. She's doing it to put out goodwill. And she's doing it so hopefully at the end of the day, you'll remember her and use her in the future. She is wonderful. She's the real deal. And um, a lot of my people have called her already and she's just great. So there are some really good opportunities to refinance. Now, how do you, what do you do to prepare for opening day? Well, you want to keep your referral sources engaged with you, whether it be lawyers. And um, I have a piece of technology called Simverta which is about x-ray digitizing and which is a billing opportunity. If you want to learn more about that, just give me a call, 631-786-4253. You have a tremendous amount of billing opportunities you could do, and this is x-ray digitizing within your office. Um, and this company, I'm, I'm not going to really dig into it too much. This is just called Simverted.com, and it gives you a great opportunity. I'm looking for passwords and I want to just log in so you can see what you can do. Um, <clears throat> let's just log in. Put one here. Put one here. There we go. So you actually have an opportunity to build reports by digitizing your patients, which will then give you a tremendous opportunity to see what's wrong with your patient and which will grossly change your diagnosis, prognosis, and treatment plan. It'll enable you to determine if there's laxity of ligaments. It'll be able to determine if there's alteration of motion segment integrity and impairments. It'll teach you where pathology is in your patient's spine. It'll give you a treatment map to see what's going on based upon, all based upon evidence. It's all evidence-based. There is no guessing. There is no maybe, shoulda, coulda, might. It's all evidence-based, based upon the literature. In addition, um, we're doing lawyers' webinars. Whoop, get up here. We're doing lawyers' webinars, and everyone should participate. The first one starts Thursday, March 26th. We're doing age-dating herniated discs and, and diffusing deceptive rhetoric. Um, and this is for lawyers. 
uh, low speed accidents and, and seriously bodily injuries. Understanding Colossus, strain sprain, a serious and a permanent bodily injury, and so much more. We're going to be doing this every week, and we charge $11 per attendee, and you, the doctor, should pay for it. I mean, just to bring them in to keep them engaged. And the reason we do that, and the $11 I apologize for, especially now because it can be expensive for some people, but the technology to deliver this is way expensive. It's in the thousands, so it's just a little bit to help recoup some of that cost. But the reality is, is we want to do whatever we could do to help you keep your client, your patients, or actually your referral sources engaged with you to get them to like you, to get them based upon your clinical excellence. And hopefully you've got some of those credentials behind you, such as, um, you know, uh, trauma qualified or hospital qualified, your MRI spine uh, qualified. You've got all of this, inf this knowledge. And then the lawyers will be able to work with you at a higher level. And if you want to learn more about that, give me a call. We'll teach you how to do it. It's really easy. Okay? Write this down. My phone number if you need it. 631-786-4253. So again, we're doing age data. This is our first one. This is the invitation. This is it. It's simple. This seminar is an evidence-based evidence presentation on how to understand the demonstrative verification of disc herniation and dating causality. That is the hottest issue in the nation right now. It's just easy. Listen, we have programs uh, for our clients. Uh, we're breaking into uh, medical providers, medical primaries, uh, hospitals, emergency rooms, especially now. They need us terribly. We've got an entire program behind that for our clients, breaking into urgent cares, large corporations. We're the solution to a lot of what society needs because especially right now, the healthcare system is choked. Normally, the healthcare system is choked, but right now, they're drowning and they need help. So we're going to give you all of those solutions. We're going to give you a lot. There's so much more to come. There really is, and I hope to be able to deliver more information as it becomes a, a, um, available to us and we can get it to you. And I just want to thank you so much for allowing me to share this time with you. And, and, and I humbly submit myself that I'm, I'm just happy to be able to do my part. And I hope this took a little bit of stress away from you. And we'll catch you the next time. I'm going to put some music on on the way out. And um, again, thank you so, so much.